every little bit helps, doesn't it? It really does. You know, there may be somebody listening now who thinks, well, I'd like to help this guy out. Joshua sounds like he's got a good idea, and we can all make money. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. I hope that helps, Joshua. Thanks uh, very much for that. 0845 6060 973, uh, LBC 97.3. James in Croydon. Hello, James. Hello, Clive. I'm a first-time caller. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much. Um, and hello, Mr. Boris. I wanted to ask you, I help people look for work myself. I won't name the company. And we call uh, the term your teammate or tell me about yourself. When an employer usually opens up the questions to the applicant. But my question is, I personally want to break into a different industry. What would you suggest I do in terms of my pitch? Uh, the industry I'm thinking of is oil and gas, and the research that I've done says that they're, they need people in the industry, there's a shortage, um, and it's very hard to break into, so I was just wondering if you could possibly advise on how to pitch to a new employer in a new industry if you're transitioning in your okay. career. Okay, James, well, well the, the first thing is that, that my job as a psychologist is to listen to what people say. And one of the things you said in the middle of the sentence was, it's very difficult to break into. So yeah. your belief system is already um, holding you back slightly. You know, if, if you, I'm, it's strangely, even if that is true, it doesn't help you to repeat it again and again to say, it's very difficult to break into. Let's just what pretend it's doing, not there. If you're going into <laughs> any industry, or a new industry, is actually concentrating rather than concentrating on your own Are they all barriers like to, to getting in your way is thinking the about them. Like when you put negative things like them? that, you put a big what block the on your face like that, that you rather than you expand your thinking. That yeah. you can present to them. Um, shift the way you're thinking about it. I would also work on, again, uh, we keep going into it, but um, your relationships and how are you one-to-one -one with these people? If you're already helping people getting into jobs, are you good in a one-to-one -one situation, James? Yes, okay. Um, do you know, I right? think I am. I'm one-to-one, -one. yes. And so you're confident to actually walk in and meet people and, and build instant rapport with these people? I believe so, yes, yes. And I tell them about my background, but the issue is, well, not the issue, one of the challenges that I'm having is because of the lack of experience within that industry, I'm trying to sell the potential employer on my transferable skills. And that's, that's what I'm coming up against. Well, one of the, the, the first secrets in the pitching Bible is it's all about them. And it's sometimes people are so busy talking about themselves and what they can bring to it that, that they forget that we're in a relationship with somebody else. So you need to um, think about how you are relating to the person and how you are presenting yourself body language wise. It's a hard question to answer this because I can't see you and I don't know what you're doing at the moment. But I would still come back to saying, think about your language patterns, the way you're using your language to yourself and to the potential employer. One of the things that I talk about in the books a lot is selling language patterns. And there's ways you can deliver your language that make you much more persuasive. And what you're trying to do here is persuade somebody that you are worth the investment. So I would think more about how you can persuade with lovely use of language and good clarity of message um, rather than um, just thinking it's not possible. It's a very big, full industry. James, uh, thanks again for an interesting question. Uh,
lots of messages coming in on this as well. Uh, if you want to text, by the way, it's 84850, or you can email clive at lbc.co.uk. Solomon's uh, emailed in, say, Clive, just listening to your show, and uh, one advice that a good friend gave to me is that I shouldn't take job rejections negatively. The truth is that the job was not right for me. It's amazing how that changes your attitude and gives you a boost in confidence. Do you like that idea? It is. It's perspective, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, you have to change. You have to go into any job search with a good attitude. You know, and I always say to people, who's in charge of what's going on in your brain? Mm. Some people look at me strangely and have to think for a moment. <laughs> they say, it's me. I'm in charge of it. So whatever you're putting into your brain, actually, you're in charge of it. So you can think positively about things and have a belief system that supports you getting a job. And that could be just people thinking um, everybody you meet is a potential help for you to get the next job. Brett has uh, emailed, he says, I often help people with their CVs and, s and sometimes I'm not surprised they don't get interviews. Many times I've seen uh, such silly mistakes, such as using words like exceptional in every second sentence, uh, i.e. exceptional interpersonal skills, saying you have excellent computer skills even though your CV layout looks like a dog's dinner. Um, you don't know how to use the tab key to lay things out. Using stock and store cliches like able to work well as part of a team as well as on my own initiative. Put another way, I don't think it's a good idea to oversell yourself. The CV should be uh, industrial without saying uh, what you think about yourself. Sometimes less is more. What do you think about that? And in fact, w when you were talking about being confident and uh, going in to, uh, to pitch yourself, I couldn't help thinking, yes, you don't want to be negative. But at the same time, I'm, I'm thinking I'm watching The Apprentice and I'm seeing all these plonkers talking into camera saying they are the best thing since sliced bread. And, and that's just embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And uh, it, that's that point where confidence seeps over into arrogance, mm. which is, you know, which makes everybody cringe. You know, they, they think that they have to be um, the big I am. Thing. And that's not what people buy. When I was talking to James, I was talking um, to him about that when you are in an interview situation or working with people, it's not all just about you. It's all about them. You have to connect to the person in front of you. And if you've got a, an interviewer or a board of people you're um, pitching to, it's about connecting to them rather than hoping that they're going to connect to you. And mm. what you can offer them. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, right, we're uh, talking with Paul Boros, uh, uh, the pitch doctor, about pitching yourself, getting a job, if you want to join in. 0845 6060 973. Hang on, John, we'll be with you in a moment. More calls coming here on LBC 97.3. is the number. This is LBC 97.3 at 9.45. Ross Powell is yeah. in the LBC 97.3 Travel Centre. Thank you very much. Clive, looking first, what's happening on the M25? Delays building up now. We'll settle up. What flight is free?
selected tiles this month only at Elite Tiles and Interiors. You'll find a vast range of beautiful tiles at discount prices at our magnificent Staples Corner Showroom. Elite Tiles and Interiors Spring Sale now on. See elite-tiles.co.uk or call 020-8202-1806. In a medical emergency, you don't need to wait. Visit the Urgent Care Centre at Central London's Princess Grace Hospital. Open from 8am until 10pm, seven days a week. We treat both minor and more serious conditions. And we'll see you quickly without an appointment. Get fast, expert, private treatment from just £100. The Urgent Care Centre at the Princess Grace Hospital, where a doctor will see you now. Search online for Urgent Care Centre. You saw the cost of filling your car come down. Well, it just has at your local Vauxhall retailer. As well as up to five years not percent APR representative flexible finance with no deposit, Vauxhall are giving away £500 of free fuel with every new car at the big event this weekend. Just go to your local Vauxhall retailer or visit vauxhall.co.uk slash big event. APR representatives, subject to status, T's and C's apply. 18 or over, guarantee may be required. Financed by either Vauxhall Motor Finance or Vauxhall Finance. £500 fuel offer at participating retailers. Exclusions apply. LBC 97.3. Coming up at 10, Anthony Davis. Anti-G8 demonstrators have taken to the streets in London and Belfast. But what would you like world leaders to prioritise in the G8 Summit? London's biggest conversation with Anthony Davis. Tonight from 10, LBC 97.3. I'm Clive Bull, this is LBC 97.3, I'm with you till 10, and we're talking about how to get a job, how to sell yourself with uh, Paul Barros, the pitch doctor, and if you've got a question, 0845 6060 973 is the number to call. Just want to mention uh, Phil, who, uh, funnily enough, I was just talking about The Apprentice, and he's just emailed to say, as someone who's employed people over the years, I think there's nothing less appealing than false or overconfidence. I would cite competitors on The Apprentice. Apprentice as the perfect anti-model of what I would look for. I rate intellectual honesty and purity, how someone thinks about an issue or a problem, the process they employ in a situation where they may not have the actual knowledge, humility and likability are also key. Would you agree uh, with that? Well, absolutely. Humility and likability. That's a very interesting thing, that likability um, thing, because it's very hard to put your finger on. But actually... You can teach it. I have taught people how just by connecting with people, by ways of looking in the eye, mm. by their own body language, they can become no. more likable. Uh, let's go to John in Harrow next. Hello, John. Hi there. Um, hi, I just wanted to... First time caller, by the way. Well done. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to share my experience, uh, really. Uh, I'm 25 years old, um, and I... Currently, well, when I was at school, I didn't do particularly well. Um, it didn't sort of do fantastic in, in, in college thereafter. And to be honest, I was on a bit of a road, if you like, to, to go down the route of, of just sitting at home and, and taking sort of money from uh, the government and, you know, various other things that come, come with that. Um, I found that to be something that I didn't want to, I didn't want that to be the case. I didn't want that to be where, where my life would sort of end up going. So I, I set the, the view that I wanted to achieve better than that. Now, getting a job was not easy uh, without those sort of, you know, basic sort of qualifications, if you like. But I found that working with people for me was my, you know, was my sort of escape. I found that, you know, customer service, if you like, working in front of, of people um, was, was something I was relatively good at. Um, started working in a restaurant uh, locally in my, in my, in my town um, where I got sort of the first notch on a CV, if you like, um, and then sort of progressed that to, to actually, you know, take uh, responsibility um, in, in, in a restaurant, which uh, for me gave me a bit of a boost. Obviously, clearly showed that I wasn't too, too bad at doing what I was doing. Um, from that point, uh, I found that I, I, you know, a few more doors opened for me in terms of, of where I could go. So, yeah, you know, that was a transferable skill in many different areas. So, I mean, I took that, I took that abroad. I went to work for a holiday tour operator and I did, I did a, a summer season. And um, I advanced relatively quickly within that up to, again, maintaining the, the management um, within the restaurant, um, which 
it led me then on to, on to being uh, eventually sort of resort management in another country. Um, and sort of, I'm looking, you know, five years on, I mean, there's been a few developments along the line, but I'm now working in, in, in finance in, in City, and I'm, and, you know, which normally would be a graduate position. You'd normally have all sorts of different processes to go through to get there, which I did. Um, but I think that was down to just me having enthusiasm, which had been touched on Thank you. 